What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you, finally I'm back playing Druid and we made Lightning Storm because of the huge buffs that came with Season 3 for Druid and Lightning Storm in particular. So big shout out to DT is Wardo, big member in my community for bringing me this build in the variant. Um, the build is just absolutely insane. You're going to be able to crush all content you're not going to be able to like one shot Durio, but you will kill him phase one. <clears throat> you can do T100s, no problem, which we are going to do today. I will showcase that, but let's go over everything you need to know for the build, the skills, the gear, Paragon board, all that good stuff, and then we'll get right into the showcase. So here we go. Uh, skill tree. We are doing Lightning Storm. Okay, this has been a skill that has been around for a while and it's kind of been dabbled with, but it never was super strong. The mana was always super hungry and it just was really tough to play. But now with a few additions to some legendary items and just affixes, the build is actually very smooth and very, very powerful. Okay, so we're starting off with Wind Shear, just two points only to get into... Uh, our core skills, you notice down here on the bar that we are actually not doing a core skill at all. You don't need to. Our mana management is through the roof. We have no issues with mana sustain in this build, okay? However, it is going to require a couple gear pieces, which I will highlight once we get to that section. But then we're going to max out Lightning Storm into Primal Lightning Storm for the Immobilize. Very important. Then we're taking Predatory Instinct for Crit Chance which is super nice. We're going to come down and we are going to grab Earth and Bulwark, probably one of the best abilities that the Druid actually has. And we're going to be taking uh, Preserving for the more maximum Fortify. We are going to be doing a lot more damage when we're Fortified, so that's why we're taking that one instead of it, uh, Innate. Also, Innate has been completely... I don't want to say nerfed, but the bug was fixed from a few seasons ago. Defensive skills, we are taking Ancestral Fortitude for more res resistances, as well as Vigilance for more damage reduction when we use a defensive skill. Yes, we only have one, but because of how this works, we're going to be able to keep Earth and Bulwark pretty much up all the time. Now we're going to come in, we're using all of our companions because we're using a power that is going to boost our damage based on how many companions that we have. So we got... Of course, Wolves, just one point. We got just one point in, in um, Poison Creeper, as well as one point into Ravens up to Brutal. The only reason that we're going Brutal here is because the increased damage, but more importantly, the increased critical strike chance against enemies when we send it down. When you see here, you pop it, these Ravens just kind of fly in inside that. Um, we're going to have an increased crit chance. This is mainly just for bosses. Then we're going to come down. I'm taking one point into Elemental Exposure for Vulnerability. One point into Charge Atmosphere for even more Lightning Bolt damage. Three points into Electric Shock just to do even more damage and to immobilize. And then we're doing one point into Bad Omen, which is pretty awesome for Vulnerability. <clears throat> Next, we're taking Trample just for Mobility as well as Unstoppable. Trample and Earth and Bulwark are going to be our only two skills that are going to grant us Unstoppable, which makes us pretty fast in this build. Then we're taking one point in Neurotoxin. Uh, we max out the points in Invenom for even more bonus critical strike damage against poison enemies. And then, of course, one point in the Toxic Claws, which is going to allow us to apply our poison. And then this just makes our crit damage through the roof, okay? Next, we're taking maximum points into Defiance here for even more damage against Elites. One point into Circle of Life for healing. Three points into National Disaster for even more damage against vulnerable enemies and damage against stunned and immobilized targets. Then we're taking Renaissance for even more nature skill damage. 6% multiplicative. Triple this if an Earth skill was cast after a Scorm skill and vice versa. So when we cast our Earth skills, then we cast Storm Lightning or Lightning Storm. We get a huge damage buff from Renaissance. Then we're maxing out... Um, Quick shift from when we shape shift out of human form into werewolf. Because as soon as we do that, we're in werewolf form. As soon as we hit lightning, we get more damage. Then we got natural fortitude for even more fortify. And then we got one point into heightened senses for DR. Now we're taking nature's fury as our key passive here. This is really what's going to make the build work. Okay, casting an earth skill has a 30% chance to trigger a free storm skill. And vice versa. In addition, they count as both Earth and Storm. So it's going to allow us to, when we cast Earth and Bulwark, to be able to trigger a Storm skill. And it's just going to counteract each other, just triggering one over the other. And that's going to go right into our 
gear pieces here, which is how this build is going to work. Tempest War is <clears throat> required on the high end. You are going to need this. This is going to be the main item that you need for your mana sustain. When you don't have this, you do have to drop um, like one of your companions or drop trample and use your basic a skill just to make sure that you can replenish your mana efficiently. Uh, next, this is also why our storm skills are also werewolf skills, which is why we go into lightning strike. We become a werewolf. Symbiotic here. This is what triggers with our key passive. So when nature's fury key passive triggers, our non-ultimate cooldowns of the opposite type are reduced by 4.5 seconds. So when we trigger earth and bulwark, it would give a cooldown to a storm skill when our key passive triggers, when nature's fury triggers. When a storm skill would trigger our nature's fury key passive, it's going to reduce our earth and bulwark um, skill. It's going to reduce the cooldown so we can keep the uptime on it. We're never, ever manually casting any of these skills except for ravens on a boss. That's it. Otherwise, we use trample to move around. We always cast Earth and Bulwark on cooldown, and we just lightning strike things to death. Next, the brand new gloves this season, which is why this build has become pretty strong. We got the Unsung Aesthetic Wraps, which is going to increase our crit strike chance, gives us more ranks of Lightning Storm, light ranks in Defiance, and Lucky Hit Chance. But more importantly, Lightning Storm is going to gain an additional strike each time it grows. And Lightning Storm crits cause Lightning to strike twice, dealing increased damage. I got a pretty, pretty good roll on these. To Bolt's Will, this is perfect. Increased damage whenever we become unstoppable. We gain more mana back. Super good. We got Ghost Walkers, my favorite for move speed. And while we're unstoppable with these two skills to be able to move freely. Then we're doing a one-handed instead of two. One-handed for more damage. And we're doing Shepherds, which is going to give us core skills, which is our Lightning Storm. Is going to give us more damage for each active companion. Now, we have four ravens that will always fly by us when we're facing enemies. So that's four. We're always going to have three wolves. So that's seven. And then we always have two poison creepers as passives. So that's nine. So we got nine times 16% multiplicative damage. Now, if you do activate any of these, like Poison Creeper um, or Ravens, you will get a higher damage increase. So you can do that if you wish, but just remember that on our Symbiotic Key Passive, we want to keep Earth and Bulwark up 100% of the time. So we don't want that to trigger and also give us um, cooldowns on these three. Even though they're companion skills, it's just I don't want to risk it. I'm pretty sure it'll only trigger of the opposite type. So we should be okay there. So you should, should actually be able to just spam these if you really wanted to. I don't, but you don't have to. Then we got um, Retaliation. Our core skills are based on how much uh, Fortify we have. So increased damage there. Super easy. Then we got Stampede. Gain one additional companion. In addition, your companions deal bonus damage. We don't care about that. It's just the additional companion, which is just going to make it more. And then, of course, Starless Skies to make not only the mana recost reduced by... 40% but give us 40% increased damage so this is pretty insane 12 mana or spirit excuse me per strike is a lot when we're channeling up to five of them so 12 times five is a lot so we reduce it by 40% pretty insane now <clears throat> excuse me our contract is per or construct is pretty much the same adrenaline duration tactical safeguard Tempest, Devastation, Efficiency, and Poison because this is our other way besides Toxic Claws to apply Poison. So we make sure we get that increased crit damage from Invenom. Now over to the Paragon board. Again, I'm not going to go over this in detail, um, showcasing every little thing. So if you guys want to pause the video, you can. But I will talk about the Glyphs. The build link will be down in the description below. I don't even know why I have to say this. I had somebody comment and go, hey, can you go over the paragon board very slowly again i i'm guessing that they didn't listen to the video because the build link is down below to where you can look at this in great detail i'm not going to go over every single thing on here it just takes too long so we're doing earth and sky for more nature skill damage we're doing spirit for even more crit damage and crit strike chance 
And then we're also doing Territorial for more uh, damage up close with damage reduction. We're doing Undaunted for more damage and damage reduction while we're fortified. We're also taking Werewolf because we're pretty much going to always be in Werewolf unless we swap out. So damage reduction there and bonus damage is good. And then Keeper, you and your companions deal 10% increased non-physical damage. And then a lot of these are going to give boosts to our notable rare nodes um, in here. But yeah, we're only running six which is really, really good. I really love the board. It balances out really nice. We're also going to be taking Ancestral Guidance for even more damage. And then we're also taking Thunderstruck for even more damage. This build strives and is very tricky on your close damage versus distant damage as well. So that's why you see that I have a 38% increased bonus damage here. Now, once I can re-roll my crit strike damage here to damage or close damage, it'll be even higher than 38%. But just keep in mind, that's how that works. It's very tricky because it's close damage and distant damage, okay? And then our last big legendary node, which you need for the build, is Lust for Carnage because this is what's going to help us with our spirit management Crit strikes with werewolf skills because we're making our storm skills werewolf skills with Tempest Roar that we're going to be able to get two spirit every single time we crit. And boy, do we crit very often. So to get into the T100, I just want to kind of showcase this a little bit. The build is very simple. You basically just pop Earth and Bulwark and you just spam it. Now, what you're looking for when you do this is it's kind of a feel and the best way it was described to me to know that you're doing maximum lightning storm damage is you hold lightning storm for one lightning storm two lightning storm three lightning storm because while you're moving you can keep the maximum damage up so as you can see there's only a few now you see i'm at the maximum because i've held it for more than three so now if i move right and then i kind of like am pivoting or pulling every single time i tap lightning storm it's going to be the maximum amount as long as i am keeping those stacks up and casting otherwise you're just kind of stuck standing still i will mention that that is probably one of the biggest negatives about the build that took me a while to kind of get used to was the movement in the build but we are really fast so i'm going to showcase this t100 in this vault and just kind of like show you how fast we actually can be with the build and how much damage it does so the damage really varies depending on the crits that you're going to get, but on average, you're doing like 700,000 to a million damage. You can crit much, much higher than that as long as you have your unstoppable going. But the build is very simple. You can already see that we're super fast. Trample to just kind of move around. And now that I got max stacks, we're just kind of moving through, right? And because you can do so much damage at a distance, you just kind of move through the dungeon and it's very very easy you can see i can hit poison creeper there oh my god i just got smashed so hard from that owie so the build guys is pretty pretty easy you're just gonna come up get your stacks oh watch out for the death stuff and just deal damage as you go and you can see like every time i move because i've already hit the max i'm just sitting at my maximum lightning storm stacks which is pretty awesome I don't know why I'm, like, getting stunned there. It's so silly. But, yeah, the build is is fairly, fairly efficient, very strong. The build is very, very easy to play. The only negative to the build that I'll say is just that it's, it's a lack of movement with the build compared to, like, other ones. But, again, this build can do all content. It can do absolutely everything. You just kind of fly through. You do a lot of damage, a lot of AoE damage. This is really good for farming things as well. Oh boy. Make sure we don't get don't get hit here. And you're just kind of like you just kind of kite stuff, man. Hold it all down, kill everything. It's super easy. I wish the targeting sometimes would be a little bit better on there, but yeah, you just kind of blast through it all. Just lightning storm things up. Super easy. But yeah, guys, that is the build. It's lightning storm. It's it's incredibly strong. You're very, very durable. And you just kind of like AoE kill everything. Now, I don't even have the build to the best that I can possibly do. You can definitely get 
up to like six to 10 mil crits with this build, depending on what you want to do. And you could also just swap stuff out. Like if you want more armor, you could swap out like maybe like Stampede if you really want to like Symbiotic or something and put more uh, like what you could do instead of doing a two-handed, you could do a one-handed and an offhand, put Shepherds here and then move um, Symbiotic to the offhand and then run Juggernaut, which might be better for T100s if you want, but the build is still very, very durable. But yeah, guys, that's the build. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.